Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Saturday, June the 22nd, 2019. Let's talk heavyweight boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just briefly go over my basic thesis on heavyweight boxing at least, right? Things run in cycles. You will have big home run hitting, one punch KO power fighters, right? They'll rule the roost, knocking guys out. You know, you see a lot of muscles, you see these overhand rights that just drop guys or lead left hooks, and they'll rule the roost. Then you'll get the guys with hand speed. Uh, or with combinations and timing, who can collapse the pocket, who can actually force these bigger guys to box, and who themselves have power, right? I believe that, you know, <laughs> that period, that evolution, then leads to lateral movement, right? Suddenly, guys have legs. Guys can move around the ring. Guys can make you miss. Right? Guys can outbox you with a mobile pocket. Then I believe history starts to repeat itself. So, if I'm right, right now we're toward the ending of a big man era of one punch boxing, right? You saw Andy Ruiz beat uh, Anthony Joshua. You noticed that when Ruiz collapsed the pocket, you noticed Joshua didn't really know what to do. Joshua couldn't handle the hand speed. Joshua wasn't accustomed to fight that fast, right? A guy like Joshua with great power in both hands wasn't expecting a shorter man to be hunting him. Joshua wanted to be the hunter, not the hunted. Right? And you notice some skills that other fighters would have. Um, the ability to clinch and hold on, to turn, to move away. Joshua hadn't really developed, right? Because he was the one who usually knocked guys out. He wasn't the guy who had to clear his head. Well, let me say this. Before that Andy Ruiz Joshua fight, I made a video here because Joshua was supposed to fight Jarrell Miller. And I named some guys who I thought would be good opponents for Joshua. One of the guys I named in that video, and it's still up here on YouTube, was Andy Ruiz. Another one, and this guy is very important. Right? Very important. Another guy I named was Adam Konaki. Right? Konachki, I understand he pronounces it. Forgive me on the pronunciation. A fighter out of Brooklyn, New York. Now, I believe this guy is one of the most dangerous men in the heavyweight division. Let me point out, when Andy Ruiz, in the fight right before he became heavyweight champion, was asked in the ring after he beat Alexander Demetrenko, who he wanted to fight, he actually mentioned Konachki. Right? Andy understands this fight style. A guy who collapses the pocket, throws short punches, throws punches with both hands, high volume, actually has a pretty good stiff jab, but just uses it to open the door then runs in with power shots. Right, I believe Ruiz understood that Kanachki is a serious threat to the heavyweight title. Right, you do have a heavyweight champion right now, one of them at least, Tyson Fury, who has lateral movement, who could get on his back foot and work behind reach and a jab. Right, but let's be real here. That might not be enough to stop an Andy Ruiz or an Adam Konaki. Konatsky.
Okay, we'll just call him Adam. We'll make it easy on me here. Right now, he's fighting Chris Ariola at Barclays, where Adam likes to fight. The play I'm recommending here is to take the favorite in the fight. Kanatsky is dangerous, folks. Don't view him as, you know, a placeholder fighter. Don't view him as an interim fight by some big time heavyweight on his way to a big money fight. This guy, to me, is a legitimate threat. Legitimate threat to folks like Deontay Wilder. Right? I personally thought, had Joshua signed up to fight Kanatsky, I thought Kanatsky would be the betting side of the play, not necessarily that he would beat Joshua. Right? Just like I thought Andy Ruiz was undervalued, I didn't necessarily think Ruiz would beat Joshua. But I knew that the underdogs against Joshua were live underdogs, right? I believe this guy would give Joshua all he could handle. And the reason is because he fights fast. You look at him on film, he doesn't have the blinding hand speed of Andy Ruiz, right? Ruiz, as I've said in other videos, to me, has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Right, this guy who's taller than Ruiz, right, Adam is 6'2", 6'3". This guy comes in and he has a very straight, very good jab, right? Then he's throwing other punches behind it. His operating premise is that his timing and his ability to set you up for certain shots right his punch selection and he's a combination puncher like Ruiz but a little bit different because he's more measured Ruiz is that explosive combination puncher right Kanaki is the guy who's throwing a combination but it looks slow I'm just telling you in the ring guys who are unprepared for it don't know how to block the shots and this guy firmly believes that if he collapses the pocket on you and trades with you, he's going to beat you up. I think he beats Chris Ariola. Let's, let's talk about Ariola. You thought Ariola was a little bit past his expiration date when he fought Deontay Wilder. Folks, that was three years ago. You realize by the time this fight takes place, it will have been three years since Ariola lost to Deontay Wilder. Let me say this too about Ariola, right? He beat a guy who was a protected fighter. By protected fighters, I mean a guy with a great record who got that record fighting stiffs. Right? A guy named Jean-Pierre Augustin. Now let's be clear on Augustin. This is one of the fights Ariola had since fighting Wilder. Right? Ariola, believe it or not, is the IBF North American heavyweight champion. He got that designation by fighting Jean-Pierre Augustin. But understand, you can't look at the record. You actually have to look at who the guys fought. Augustin shortly before fighting Chris Ariola, fought a fighter named Umberto Soto, a heavyweight. Now if you're in a boxing, you know the name Umberto Soto is a big name. Right? Umberto Soto was a hell of a fighter. But he wasn't a heavyweight. I have a problem, and it's a big problem, with fighters using the names of other fighters who were excellent fighters. Right? It'd be ridiculous for some heavyweight to debut and call himself Sugar Ray Leonard or Floyd Mayweather. That just wouldn't work for me. Right? So you have a guy in boxing, a heavyweight, calling himself Umberto Soto. That's curious. Then, of course, you look at who he fought 
And did you know the fight he fought right before? He fought Jean-Pierre Augustin. Was against a guy who had a 2 win and 14 loss record. Right? Don't fall in love with fighters' records. You need to fall in love with their level of opposition. I prefer guys who fight the tough fights. Right? Some of the guys with losses are hell of tough opponents. Right? Floyd Mayweather in interviews used to say Emmanuel Augustus was the toughest guy he fought. Augustus was a guy who had a lot of losses. Right? Some of these guys, some of these guys with losses are dangerous. So here, Umberto Soto, let's face it, his record was inflated. He's one of the big scalps on the resume of Jean-Pierre Augustin. The fact that Chris Ariola beat Augustin doesn't really tell me much. What I do know is that Ariola's 38, and let's face it too, he's not the kind of 38 that Vladimir Klitschko was. Right? Guys who keep themselves in shape all the way through tend to age more gracefully than guys who you look at one fight, the guy's hopelessly out of shape, you look at another fight, oh, he's serious this time, he's trained, you look at him again, the guy's out of shape, right? That, let's call it an Adrian Broner lifestyle, doesn't help your longevity. Let's face it, that's the lifestyle Chris Ariola has lived, right? It's not about how he looks. It's about you're watching him in fights and the guy's looking gassed and winded just a few rounds into the fight. You see him against Deontay Wilder. Talk about a big moment. Right? Could have been a career-defining fight for him. And Ariola looked out of shape. So I view Ariola as a guy who's going to be an old 38 against Konachki who is, to me, one of the most dangerous men in the heavyweight division. Now I know, a lot of people don't see it that way, right? I've discussed him with some people involved in the sport, and to make a long story short, when I mention him, there's a noticeable lack of enthusiasm. My point to you is this, you're dealing with a guy who is about 40 pounds heavier than Joe Fraser used to be. You're dealing with a guy who's two-handed. His short, straight right hand is one of the best punches in the heavyweight division. Right? You're dealing with a guy who has come up through New York City boxing gyms. Right? He's very good friends with people like Jarrell Miller. Let's just say when this guy is preparing for a fight, you can imagine, he's fighting very tough guys in the gym. Right? I'll agree, his hand speed doesn't look fast on film. I'll agree with that. But ask yourself about his timing. Ask yourself about his accuracy. Ask yourself about the fact that He's riddling guys with both hands. Look at the lack of time he gives a fighter when he hits that fighter with a jab and then just pivots into the pocket. Now we got a gift, right? During the Gerald Washington, Adam Konachki fight, one of the announcers was a great heavyweight, Lennox Lewis. So Lewis, while watching Konachki bludgeon Gerald Washington, that's an early KO, folks. That fight doesn't make it past the second round. Lewis, just listen to the commentary, starts to say that Konachki would be easy for him because he would just take a step back and throw a punch knowing that Konachki is trying to collapse the pocket on him. <laughs> my question is simple 
In what fight have you seen Deontay Wilder do that? Have a guy collapse the pocket, then Wilder plans an anchor punch, is what Sugar Ray Robinson used to call it, right? Where the guy's coming in and you set it up, so you just take a step back and boom, hit the guy with a shot, right? Folks, I'm just telling you, don't take those skills for granted, especially when you're dealing with big, clunky, unproven heavyweights, right? Kanachki's skill in collapsing the pocket, in forcing the issue, in throwing volume, in being prepared to trade. He also has the kind of defense that guys who like to trade have. Right? As he's collapsing the pocket, you'll notice he's not naked. He has his hands around here. The Gerald Washington fight, as Washington starts to throw back at him, as Arthur Spielk in an earlier fight starts to throw back at him, you'll notice he catches shots as he's throwing shots. I don't think 38-year-old Chris Ariola is prepared for this. I think the heavyweight division right now is one of the most compelling stories in boxing. Right? I don't think most guys at heavyweight have the skill set, whether it's taking steps back and making him pay. I'll agree. Joshua does exactly that against Vladimir Klitschko late in that fight with the best punch of the fight, an uppercut. Right? But I don't see a lot of guys able to kind of like take a step back, hit guys with shots, or use lateral movement. Some guy is hunting you down, right? A lot of guys will get up on their toes, stick a jab in your face, create space, punish you for being too aggressive. That's not today's heavyweight division, is it? You're seeing a lot of flat-footed guys. We have forgotten that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, guys can actually get up on their toes and dance. Right? I think Kanatsky is a heavyweight to watch. I think this is going to be a signature fight. I'm expecting him to beat Ariola by stoppage. Right? He's the side of the fight I like. I think this fight's going to be Ariola's last hurrah. The bet I'm recommending is Kanachki to win the fight, right? Brooklyn is his backyard. He gets to face a 38-year-old who's beating guys who really haven't fought anyone since losing to Deontay Wilder. And that was three years ago, right? Keep an eye on Kanachki. Let me say this too for the heavyweight division understand what we're in for. I think Andy Ruiz beats Anthony Joshua in the rematch. Right? The doors open. Both men now know that the shorter guy can KO the bigger guy. Right? Both guys know it. Joshua's chances of winning come down to a left hook or a straight right hand. Right? I think Andy Ruiz, also the judges, are going to view the fight radically different. Right? Before the first fight, they thought, okay, well, here's the champ fighting a guy who's a long shot. Now, those close rounds are going to say, hey, the champ held his own. Right now, every time in that fight Joshua blinks, we're going to ask ourselves a question we didn't ask the first time, which is, wow, is Joshua hurt? Is he about to get knocked down? So I think Ruiz beats Joshua in the rematch if that fight goes forward. And I'm still a skeptic on that. I think somebody in Joshua's camp has to realize that this could be career suicide. Now if Andy Ruiz beats Joshua, just understand. If he fights the winner of this fight, that's going to be a huge moment for the sport. Let's say Ariola pulls the upset. You mean to tell me that you're going to have two guys of Mexican descent fighting for the heavyweight title? Folks, if that fight takes place in 
Staples in LA where I used to live. I'm just telling you that fight's going to be a box office bonanza. Let's say Konaki wins. Wow. Could you imagine two guys, two guys ready to collapse the pocket, right? Ruiz versus Konatsky, right? Ruiz, who wanted to fight him, is going to think to himself, okay, I have the hand speed advantage. Konatsky is going to think to himself, you know what? Ruiz is not going to be the only guy who weighs more than 250 in this fight. Right? Plus, Konatsky has a pretty good jab and isn't afraid to let his hands go. I'm just telling you, if Ruiz fights Konatsky, I just don't see how that fight could go the distance. Just style-wise, that would be a dream come true for boxing fans. So understand, this fight is setting the table for something bigger. This is a must-watch fight. I think Adam Konatsky beats Chris Ariola, right? I'm expecting both guys to be on their front foot. I'm expecting punches to be landed, right? I'm expecting very high action. I just think Konatsky just has too much. I am going to sprinkle a little bit on Chris Ariola by KO as a hedge. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by. By the way, I do have the entire Gerald Washington Konachki fight in my favorites folder, and it includes Lennox Lewis's commentary on the fight. Thanks for stopping by.